Welcome, everybody. I'm Dan Freidenberg. This is the REI Rocks Review, the very favorite part of my job, which is joining you lovely people and my lovely co-hosts. We got Angel Williams, we got Jason Williams, and we have a brand new guest. Uh, Angel, why don't you take it away? Absolutely. This is my friend, Annette Tully, and she's going to be talking to us today about how she got her first deal across the finish line. And Annette, I know we didn't get to do proper introductions. Um, Dan is a part of our team. He's like the tech person. Um, he hard codes or hand codes web pages. Like he can do it all. He is a full stack developer and that is what he does for us. So Dan, Annette, Annette, Dan. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, that, nice that was hilarious right before the show where you're like, oh, well, we haven't been formally introduced. It's like it's not <laughs> in 10 seconds, right? It was hilarious. But uh, Jason, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I've been having some issues with the stream yard, so I'm sorry I'm late. So. But I'm here. And I think I made it on time. You did. You did. So even when you're late, you're on time. But uh, just to fill you in what's going on, on the REI Rocks review, we always review summit content. So that's uh, roundtables, that's panel discussions from the REI Rocks summits. And we review them at one and a half times speed. Part of the reason for that is so you can learn a great way to earn more time in your day, which is by playing with the speed controls. But uh, the other main thing is emphasizing the good bits. And today, uh, one thing I was thinking for today, or, or maybe a, an ongoing thing in the future, Jason, we can we can talk about it later, is maybe have a little bit of a, a celebrate your wins thing. We need to normalize, especially you know, like Angel and I, you know, like when it comes to compliments and or, or like really enjoying our wins. We're not so great at it, and uh, I want to celebrate the fact that uh, Angel, in short notice contacted Annette and had her join. This is this is fantastic. I get to meet somebody new. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Uh, what do you guys think of that idea for a recurring segment? I, I think, think so. Cool. I, I think we should always celebrate our wins. And I think even, even if it's a small win, it's still a win. That way you don't get bogged down thinking everything's negative, thinking I'm not doing anything. If you even celebrate a win saying, hey, my LinkedIn post got a whole lot of traction today. Guess what? It's a win. It might not be a, a big win, but it's still a win. And and you learn something from it and you can move on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and on that note, you know, on LinkedIn, you've got a huge win. You you did your first Yona Weiss LinkedIn CRE challenge. So, so how did that work out for you there, Jason? Uh, I've made a quite a few new contacts uh, um, got a lot of people commenting on my stuff that I've never even met before so it's been working out pretty well for me excellent excellent so uh, Angel uh, uh, popped off for, for a second there there we go so, so maybe you want to introduce Annette and uh, uh, get that started while I queue up the video absolutely can so I met Annette several years ago we were both part of the W2 Capitalist Mastermind and we've been friends ever since. We actually shared a room <laughs> at Best Ever yeah. um, in March of 22. So um, there were <clears throat> three of us in that room. We had two beds and a roll away. And it made it super cheap. Felt like I was back in college um, <laughs> trying to stay somewhere on the cheap. Um, <clears throat> but it was a lot of fun. And that was a really great conference, too. So yeah. she's yeah. Um, she does multifamily. And she does a lot of, like, direct-to-seller stuff. And while we were there in 2022, she was like working a contract out with a guy. And I swear to you, she got the property. It was like 0% or something. How did you get it that? It was 1.5% 1, 1. interest for five years. Yeah. Yeah. Unheard of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah, amazing. And, and that was the property that I said, if I can get this property, I can quit my job. And, you know, I was negotiating this through the event and I got it. I think through, during the event, they signed the contract. So I was like, yay. Oh, no. Now I have to quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. All right. So uh, the content, the presentation that we are going to be going through here it is from our VIP site. It is a subscription only site and uh, we're total teases. So we frequently aren't able to get through the entire presentation. Sorry about that. 
but we want to give you just enough so you know what we're doing. But of course, we're also watching it at one and a half times speed. So do not adjust your television set. And uh, don't forget, if you want some more eyeballs for your brand, I need to let you know that this space could be yours. And let's take one moment to appreciate our sponsors with a very bubbly Angel Williams for one minute. Let's see what Hey guys, it's Angel, and we are super excited to announce our newest gold sponsors, Sponsor Cloud. Um, if you're wondering what Sponsor Cloud is, Sponsor Cloud is the one stop shop for sponsors to automate, to delegate, to execute every aspect of their syndication projects from affordable PPM generation to investor relationship management to fund administration and compliance, exclusive capital raising networking events. Plus, for the REI Rocks community, they're gonna offer free migration and customer success services when switching from another provider. That's like a $2,000 value. So contact Sponsor Cloud, contact them today and see how much time and money you can save. You can visit them at sponsorcloud.io slash contact and make sure you let them know that you're part of the REI Rocks community because these sponsors are the reason why we are able to continue offering affordable and low cost, no cost education, summits, information, knowledge, experiences, all of the things that we're able to find and bring to y'all. It happens because we have sponsors like Sponsor Cloud. So check them out, see how they can help you out in Sponsor Cloud. Thank you. That's right. It's not just a pretty hat, the Academy presents, but uh, let's get started with this presentation. Again, it's going to be at one and a half times playback speed. You can generally do that with the little gear here, but you're going to see that live. Let's get started. Did you know that 90% of the world's millionaires invest in real estate? Well, I'm Angel, how do you present real estate investing rocks? And I'm here to help you if you want to go for your piece of that pie. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us here for day two and just being a part of all the amazingness that is here. Um, these speakers have been blowing my mind and I know like beyond a shadow of a doubt <laughs> that you are learning and you know, we're just gonna keep it going. We got today, we got tomorrow. Yeah, it's just so much information. <laughs> I really hope that you kind of thought about how you wanted to digest all of this because in the VIP package, you get the recordings and you can digest it over time. So make sure you think about that. Um, at least I would like for you to think about that. And that's not, it, it really isn't being um, a selfish money thing. I'm, I would like for you to be able to take your time to really digest all of the information that you will get over these three days. So that being said, <laughs> so what we're doing today is, you know, you're looking at, you know, how to land that first deal or how to get that next deal. If you've already done your first deal, um, maybe you've done 10 deals, maybe you've done 20 deals, but you're, you know, everything we can learn makes it a little easier. Um, so Annette is going to talk to us about what it's like to land that deal, right? So I'm going to let her, um, introduce herself here and she has a presentation for us too so we're going to make sure that um if you are live access only get a pen or a pencil get a writing utensil and a piece of paper so that you can take some notes because you're going to want this stuff so annette on to you all right hi thank you for having me i'm super excited to be here and to share with you a little bit of the process that i did to land that first deal so let me see i am gonna sh um share my screen 12 steps to land your first large multifamily deal. So I'm super excited to, to share this with you because sometimes it is overwhelming to try to, to think about getting that large deal. And there's so many steps that you have to do, you know, to start that, you know, it's important to, to not get overwhelmed. And I'm going to share with you these easy steps. So, you know, let me just tell you a little bit about me. Uh, I am Aneta Lee. I was uh, born and raised in Lima, Peru, and I moved to the U.S. in 2000. I am a commercial ar architect with 18 years of experience in architecture, and I started working in real estate as a property manager, and that's how I got my experience. And then I started buying, and I started uh, buying duplexes in 2012, and then I started getting a little bit more serious about uh, real estate, and that's when I joined a mastermind, got educated, and then, uh, you know, over time, I ended up buying 190 four units in Ohio, and I am also the host of Real Estate Deal Closer show, the podcast, and also the Facebook group, um, uh, real estate closers. So if you haven't uh, seen me yet on Facebook, join my group and, and, you know, there's a lot of information being shared and you can learn there's so much and ask questions. So what are we going to learn today? Um, you know, we're going to learn how to, you know, set that large goal and not make it overwhelming. And, you know, I'm going to share with you 12 steps. I guess that's a good spot to pause right there, Annette. So, so this was uh, in the spring of 20. 21 i think 21 i believe right so 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 i imagine there's some water under the bridge since then do, do you want to catch everybody up do you want to say a little things about how things are have changed annette I'll, I'll unmute you hang on there we go let's see oh nope you need to unmute yourself 
Yes, I'm sorry. I keep muting it so I don't make noise. And then I. So first off, I talk fast, and hearing my, myself talking extra fast. <laughs> I hope people can understand me. But anyways, um, so yeah. So in the in the past, you know, two years since I did that presentation, we actually sold that 184 unit deal, and it was very profitable for us and our partners. Um, we were uh, lucky to sell it right before interest rates went up. We got an amazing offer, even though our syndication was supposed to be for five years, we got an offer and it was a very, very good offer for our um, investors. So we decided to sell and it was a really good deal. Um, so I think at that time, I, I besides the 194 unit syndication, I had about 30 units under management. And after two years now, I'm at 72 units. Um, under management, um, 20 of those are from a different investor, 18 of them I manage, and then the rest are mine uh, and my partners. So, and I mm -hmm. continue to look for more and, and buy. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks for the update. Steps that you can take today to, to get to that uh, large multifamily. And at the end, I'm going to share some free resources that I have on my website, talinvestments.com, and you can download for free and use them at, at your leisure. All right, so let's start with step number one. Step number one is going to be you got to define your goals. You got to set your goals and decide why is it so important for you to, to get to those goals. So you need to really know your why. And, you know, your why could be family. It could be personal goals. It could be financial freedom. It could be a hobby or traveling. You know, it's going to be different for each one. Uh, but you got to really uh, have to dig in and, you know, realize why you're doing what you're doing because there's going to be, you know, fun times, but there's also going to be hard times where you're going to have to really, really push and you're going to have to look at your why and be like, okay, is this worth to me? And why am I doing this? And to me, it's my family and it's, uh, you know, getting financial freedom so I can spend more time with my family and enjoy it with them traveling and having a good time. So that is my why. And that's why it drives me to keep going. Um, but, you know, sometimes that why is not very obvious. Uh, you know, for example, for me, financial freedom means not depending on, on anybody. I grew up with my mom being a single mom and we she kind of depended of my grandma to help her we live at her house and that you know having you know that experience knowing how it's like to be depending on somebody else you know that was very ingrained in me that i really didn't want to depend on others and that's why financial freedom to me is so important to provide that to my family and so that we are not dependent on anybody and even you know when i got married i didn't want to be depending on my husband so i had my savings and you know i always had that in me and you know real estate has been able to give me financial uh, freedom from my job uh, you know i don't really depend on my job anymore even though i'm still working as a commercial architect i can leave my job and you know not depend on it so you know really i am doing architecture right now because i like it not because i have to um so you know going back to step Number one, you know, dig in and what's your why? Okay, because it's, it's very important. Okay, so step number two, it's the most important one. You know, I started doing real estate without really educating myself and I had a really, you know, a bad experience. So, uh, for step number two, I want you to make sure that you educate yourself. And there's so many free resources. There's podcast, my podcast, Real Estate Disclosures, but there's so many more bigger packets and, you know, so many more. Um, you have YouTube channels, you have audiobooks and books that you can take from the library for free. You don't even have to buy them. Um, you can go to the library in, at your local library and get them for free. Um, and you can also get a free glossary from my website, aliinvestments.com, if you want, so that you can start learning the language. It is so important to learn the language and, and to educate yourself so that you can make uh, good decisions when it's time to invest. You, you don't want to be learning on the go. You want to really have a, a good um, base. So, you know, Rich Dad Poor Dad is the book that, you know, everybody starts with, a lot of people start with, uh, the ABCs of Real Estate Investing. Um, you have my website. You have so many podcasts. So take advantage of that. And once you have that basic knowledge, make sure to continue that and maybe take some courses, go to some conferences um, so that you continue. There's always room for more learning. We can always learn more, uh, you know, reading books, going to conferences. It's, it's very important. All right. So let's go to step number three. And this is very important. I was challenged to do that because for the first I want to say eight years uh, of me investing, I was kind of doing it all by myself. I really wasn't um, connecting with other investors. So, you know, joining a meetup. Uh, and meeting other investors because you learn so much from them. Um, so find a meetup in your area and it could be a virtual meetup, uh, like a Facebook group that has uh, meetups or attend one locally, um, depending on your COVID restrictions here in Florida, we are already open. So we can do um, uh, regular meetups, but you can also do virtual meetups. Uh, and it's so important because in a local meetup or in a virtual meetup, if you attend regularly, you are going to start seeing the people that attend regularly and you're going to connect with them. And these are the people that will normally be doing things in real estate. A lot of people go to a meetup and they go once and then they never come back and then, or then they come six months later. 
but they are not really focused on real estate. They are not really buying. Uh, they are not the moving and shakers. But if you go to a meetup regularly, you are going to realize who is the people that are really investing and that they, they know what they are doing. So you want to align with them. You want to uh, talk to them. You want to ask them questions. Uh, and if you go regularly, you're going to become friends uh, with them. So to me, I attend, I, I host a meetup here in South Florida, but I also attend another uh, meetup uh, that is not my own meetup because I get to, to talk to other investors and connect with them. And I have formed now a group of friends, you know, that, you know, they are not anymore the investors, the local investors in my area. They are now my friends. So when I have a deal, when I have a question, I get to call them and ask them. And, you know, the way to, to connect with people like that is to add value to them. You know, for example, uh, when I joined my first meetup, I connected with the with the leader of that meetup and I asked him if I could help him with anything. And he said, yes, can you please help me with the Facebook group? I don't like doing it. And so that led me to eventually be the leader of that chapter, uh, you know, of that Facebook group and that chapter of the meetup because I just asked to help. And at the end, I ended up being the host. So now everybody knows me as the host of uh, Multifamily and More in South Florida. Um, so that's just a small example of how you can add value even when you don't know anything. Yep, yep. I was gonna. I was just looking for that perfect moment, right? And <laughs> just was like, no, no. I, I think she's still gonna say it, but yeah, go for it. Yeah, no. So I would just say that a lot of people don't realize how important this part is, um, and especially if you can be the host. Um, going to it all the time is uber important, and going to other people's stuff is super, super important too. But if you get an opportunity to be the host of your own event you become the expert at that event. Even if you've never done a deal, you become the expert at that event and people look up to you and people want to talk to you and people want to interact with you. So being the host of your own event is a super huge deal. And if you get the chance to do it, absolutely jump on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Annette, you're, you're muted again. <laughs> As the host of your own meetup, uh, you're always going to get deals because, you know, newer people that um, they don't know how to do it, they are going to come up to you and be like, can I partner with you on this deal? I don't know what to do. And like that, I have gotten an amazing deal. It was a nine unit under market. We actually refinanced it a year uh, and a half after and we took all our cash. So now that deal is infinite return for us, the, you know, the three partners. So, you know, hosting your own event is not as hard as it seems, uh, but it can be a really good way to meet other people and to to be the person that they want to connect with. So because when you go to a diff another person's meetup, you are trying to connect with other people, but when they come to your meetup, they are trying to connect with you. So that's a great way to to meet other investors and part and meet future partners um, and get deals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, what perfect segue to mention the Academy Presents one, the REI Rocks Marvelous Mondays. There's the link on the page there. Uh, Angel, I don't know if you want to say another thing or two about uh, this particular group. I can. Um, so we meet every Monday at noon Eastern. We've been meeting for, oh gosh, two and a half years, maybe more. Um, it's a great place. It's a absolutely amazing way to start your week. There's 25 to 40 of us that get together. We're all syndicators, whether aspiring or seasoned, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can bring your questions. We're going to answer them. We're not going to give you a hard time or be, be weird about it. We're just going to help you out. We're pretty laid back and we just love to have new people joining us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, just a hypothetical, you know, make, I'll make some guesses about you in the audience based off of our LinkedIn demographics, but you might be a physician or an engineer or something like that. And uh, really what has to be going through your head is if I'm going to be getting into this industry, I'm going to have to spend a ton of time meeting a ton of people. And it, it's got to be a little bit of a concern. You know, me, I was already CTO of a, of a firm in Ohio before I made the jump into commercial real estate. And that was something that I was just going, how am I going to speed up this process? And I, I love what Annette is saying here about um, how you can consume the free stuff like these meetups first, you know, get an idea of like, is this for you? And then really... I, I, you know, Angel and I, we've been in a lot of conversations recently about coaching and, and what's going on. And it's kind of scary the number of people who are paying like 20, 30, 40 K for education, which like maybe that makes sense if you are, you know, like, you know, your W2 is going to disappear. You need to learn fast, like fast, 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 fast. 
but it, it's not a great answer for most people. And uh, I love how um, uh, you you mentioned that you should use those free options first so you know what you're getting. But uh, as far as these REI Rocks reviews every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, that's always free. And we get to uh, get wonderful presenters like Annette. So let's continue. Thank you. <laughs> Think about real estate. You know, if you... Um, you notice that somebody has a, a business card and it's not a good looking business card and you're a, um, a marketing person, you can tell them, hey, let me redesign your business card. And if they like it, then, you know, they're going to be grateful and they're going to be helpful to you as well because you're adding value to them first. So make sure to do that. Uh, but the key to this is doing it regularly. You have to become a regular meetup attender. All right. So let's do step number four and um uh, angel let me know if i'm going too fast but it, i really get excited with this because uh it's they are such easy steps to take but sometimes we just get overwhelmed so the one thing that i want to tell people is don't try to do everything at the same time just go one by one and you're going to see a lot of progress and you're going to get excited about the progress but once you are done with one and you have something set up then move on to the next step because if you try to do everything at the same time it's going to be super overwhelming and and then you're going to get frustrated so make sure that, that you know, you take your time and you don't have to be doing everything that everybody's doing. You don't have to be doing it all at the same time. All right. So step number four, and this one is kind of like a step up from the meetup, joining a mastermind. Um, to me, joining a mastermind was really a big step because it helped me double my portfolio in three months. You know, it, it was just a mastermind is a group of people that meet, you know, it could be virtually or it could be in person, but you meet uh, regularly. It could be once a week, once a month, depending on the mastermind that you join. Uh, but you know, it's going to provide you accountability. It's going to provide you education. It's going to inspire you. And you're going to surround your, yourself with people that have similar goals to you so that you're going to grow together. And eventually you can become partners. So, you know, on the accountability part, you know, I am the type of person that when I am going to get into my call, into my mastermind call, and if, if I had a goal that I was supposed to be doing for this week, I am going to go ahead and do it because I just don't want to go to my call and say like, hey, I forgot or I didn't accomplish it. So to me, accountability is a big part of a mastermind, um, you know, because it, it pushes me to do more than I would do if I was doing it all by myself. And the same goes to exercising, for example, having an accountability group keeps me going. If I'm doing exercising by myself, uh, I'm going to get 100,000 excuses why not to do it. And my head is going to convince my body not to do it. But when I am in a master in a mastermind or in a group that it has accountability, I will push to keep going. So a mastermind is really important for that. Also education. Even if your mastermind is not focused on the investing strategy that you are doing, for example, let's say you are a flipper and your mastermind is just general real estate, you are going to learn so much from other investors that are doing different things that, but that you can really apply those things to your business. Uh, so it's going to be really amazing the, the type of things that you're going to learn uh, in a mastermind when you are hearing different investors share different experiences. And, you know, maybe you start as a, a buy and hold single family person, but then you hear this other guy that is doing flips and you realize that that's a strategy that would work in your market. Then, you know, that learning firsthand from another person is going to take you so much faster to your goal. So a mastermind is kind of like a, like a super pill that you're going to take and it's going to make you expand your business so much faster. And, and, you know, when you have questions, when you have doubts, you know, you have a bunch of people that you can ask and you can pick their, their brains. I remember when I started, I was just doing buy and hold, small multifamily. And then I started seeing other members of the mastermind that were doing syndications. And that really, really intrigued me. So I started talking to them and learning and that eventually led to me being a partner in a deal and going into syndication. So, you know, people like this inspire you and they influence you to do more and to, to apply things to your business that you didn't think of before. You just didn't know the information or maybe you knew about it, but you didn't understand. And you get the chance to ask these people how they are doing it, why they are doing it. And then you form relationships where you can become partners because you are seeing these people constantly, maybe once a week, once a month. So you become friends as well as in a meetup, uh, in a mastermind, you become friends and eventually you could become partners. So joining a mastermind is step number four. So Annette, you're making this really easy for us. I got to tell you, it's it's really funny. Uh, and and just to fill everybody in the audience in, you know, Jason and I were going back and forth in the private chat and I'm going like, am I going to do three plugs in five minutes? Because <laughs> it sure feels like I'm going to do three plugs in five minutes. And it's like, okay, like, am I shameless? Well, no, but like when it, something applies like this and it's just like, hey, this is a genuine value, I got to mention. So uh, we were going to plug this anyway, especially because uh, anybody who's been following us the last couple of months, we've been, uh, we've been telling everybody about the summer cohort of Prosperi Sumis. It's just very exciting stuff. Jason, do you want to uh, take this one away and uh, say a few things? Annette already said 
all sorts of things, uh, arguably better than we could uh, <laughs> about the benefits of masterminds. But why don't you take her away? I, I will agree with you that she's already mentioned everything. Um, we, we have our mastermind starting up. It's actually next week. So if you don't get in next week, your next chance will be in uh, January. And, and what we do offer is we offer accountability. We offer direction, make sure everybody's going the direction that they want. We offer support. We offer everything that Annette has already mentioned. So I don't know if I could say it any better than that. Well, yeah, I could yeah. add, because I would have never met Annette if it hadn't been for that mastermind. Absolutely. Yes. Um, and, you know, and we're friends, right? Like, you know, we're going to this event. Hey, let's let's room together for the event. And you get, um, you know, when, when you have like friends from high school or friends from college, you know, you don't necessarily have the same interests. You don't necessarily have the same goals. But when you join a mastermind, you are meeting people that have the same goals, that have uh, probably the same values. So they become really like good friends. So, you know, I definitely joining a, ma a mastermind for me was a, a step. And this was like joining a mastermind was the first thing that I paid for. So it was really hard for me to start paying for stuff. Uh, when I knew that there, there's so much stuff available for free, but like I said, it doubled my portfolio in three months, you know, and it has m multiple valuable connections that are, I can call my friends now. So I definitely, you know, agree joining a mastermind is uh, a must. Right. Right. Yes. And it's so, so, so you get a huge ROI on your investment that yes. most people don't recognize. And like they see the dollar sign, they see, Oh my gosh, it's so expensive. But is they don't this worth? Is this worth? That's the question, right? Right. Yeah. And right. they don't see what happens on the back end when you can multiple times your investment over. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's so tempting to cut that corner in your budget, you know, because you say, okay, it's a big expense, and you know, just just meeting up and talking. But like that is not the corner you want to cut. It, it's so important. Uh, the the other thing, you know, we, we mentioned Marvelous Mondays where you can meet up with everybody virtually. But it, when you're meeting on Zooms uh, in public, you're, you know, you, you kind of have to put a shiny face on your business. I remember uh, one of the first things I learned in business was, uh, you know, when when you're talking to the public, you know, you put on that nice shiny appearance. But when business owners are talking to business owners, you don't want to be you, you want to be a little bit modest. So a friend of mine suggested, oh, you know, you say, oh, well, you know, always changing four quarters for a dollar. That was his saying, just basically, you know, you don't want to sound you know, you don't want to make people jealous when things are going well and you don't want to bum people out when things aren't going so well. But when you're in a mastermind, you have to get vulnerable. You have to get into that nitty gritty. And when you know where the skeletons are buried, then you really know where that person fits into a team. You know, like what are they really reliable on, uh, for and what do they need to delegate? You know, who do they have to seek for something else? And so you can wholeheartedly recommend them for a GP team or a partnership. And you, you, it's, it's a little bit irresponsible to do that when you've been getting you know, 10 minute doses of people. Well, it's, it's a chance for you to really put it out there. Like I had a person one time say, look, syndicator to syndicator, what's going on? <laughs> and you can just put it out there. Cause it's, it's just hard. You feel like you're the only person having problems sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But I think when you realize that others are having the same problem as you, and then, you know, you can have find the solution. And I tell you another example. Um, we were on a mastermind call. It was the, the I think it was the women's mastermind call uh, that I lead on the mastermind um, on the W2 Capitalist. And it only two people showed up. It was three of us. You know, only two people showed up to that call. And so we were able to dig in into what we were working on. And each of us had a deal. And like a week later, the three of us were under contract for our own deals because we like took the time to like talk through each of our deals and then advise the other one on how to what would I do? Like what what about doing this? What about doing that? And and so, you know, I think that call was like 
three hours and then the next week we each had a deal um so that's the kind of people that you're going to find in a mastermind and the ones that attend the calls regularly as well as in a meetup are going to be the most committed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely so i just wanted to remind everybody in the audience like this whole presentation is about getting started in real estate and this there, this is so filled with content. I'm sure you're going to want to watch this one again. So you might want to bookmark it, but the thing you can also do for us that's absolutely free if you're watching on YouTube is subscribe. It's a, it's yummy. Subscribe on YouTube. And then that way you can see each of these REI rocks reviews. We are here live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And we're joined today with Annette. Is, is it uh, Tally? Is that uh, how you pronounce your last name? Tali. Tali, Tali. Okay, cool. So the emphasis is on the second syllable. Gotcha. Here with Annette Tali. Let's continue. Step number five. Now that you have been exposed to different strategies in a meetup, in a mastermind, you know, you want to decide your niche. If you are new to real estate and you have never done investing and you did all these steps up to number five, now you have the chance to, you have listened to everybody talk about their strategy and you're going to be able to, to pick your strategy. Or if you were doing something and you realize that maybe you have a better fit doing a different strategy, now you can do that. You can change your strategy. If you started with buy and hold, let's say, and now you want to do, uh, you know, a flip, you know, that's where, where you can decide, you know, your niche, you know, for, to me, my niche was multifamily and I started with small multifamily, but then I kind of progressed into larger deals and syndications eventually. Um, but, you know, picking your niche, your, it's going to help you focus on that because sometimes we, um, you know, we start with one thing and then we see the next thing and we change and then we we continually change from one to another. And I don't recommend that. So picking your niche is going to allow you to focus on that one strategy. Even if you switch, now you're going to focus on that one thing that you want to do and you're going to put all your efforts into it. And it could be buy and hold, joint ventures, syndications and all the other strategies, buying nodes, God knows how many. But once you select your niche, you have to make sure to set goals with a size and your market because it's very easy to kind of flip-flop between what you want to do. But once you set a size and a market, uh, it's going to be so much easier to focus and, and really start doing tasks that are going to take you to the next level in that market, in that size. Now you're going to be able to contact brokers and tell them exactly what you want. If you want to do small multifamily or if you want to do large multifamily, that, those are two different markets. Those are two different brokers. The same brokers are not selling the same properties. So just deciding on your niche is going to help you uh, get to the next level because you're going to be contacting the right people, even lenders. If you are doing a three unit versus a 20 unit, you're not going to have the same lender. The same lender is not going to be the one giving you a residential loan versus a commercial loan or agency loan. So you know, focusing on your niche will allow you to pick the right people for your team. Um, and then you can start creating content and sharing this content with your friends and family so that you can educate them and you can be known as the person that, you know, knows about real estate. Like right now, I know that when my mother-in-law has a question about real estate, she will call me instead of calling her friend the realtor because she knows she's been seeing what I've been doing online and she will be ready. I'm going to be top of the mind, basically. They are going to think of me when they are thinking real estate. And if you are specific to your market, even better, because, you know, if you are doing, let's say, uh, Airbnb and that's your business and somebody's interested in Airbnb, they're going to call you uh, first. You know, if you're doing flips and somebody wants to do flips, they are going to call you because they know what you're doing. You are very specific on your market and your strategy and your niche. All right. Step number six. And step number six is my favorite part, you know, creating your brand, and you know, promoting yourself. And sometimes people want to do this first. You know, they don't want to do anything before they create their logo, they create their brand. And it is really a little bit of a waste of time because you don't know yet at the beginning on step number one, if you're going to do multifamily, if you're going to do single family, if you're going to do flips, what's going to be your focus on real estate? So you can create a whole brand and then it could be totally wrong when you realize that you didn't want to really do Airbnb, but you really want to focus on, on multifamily and you're going to have to change everything. Hey, Angel, I just wanted to mention that your friend Annette's really smart. And it's really funny because, you know, like, like I've been helping people with this stuff professionally for a while and just like all this stuff that's coming out. It's like, yes, yes. And I'm just waiting for her to walk into one of those bear traps. They're like, no, yeah. Uh, like when I think branding and you're getting into real estate, you know, half cocked is the right answer. You know, in other words, just like, don't, don't worry about getting it perfect, figure their stuff out. Yeah. This is, this is really great stuff. And well, no, and, and like, we've had those conversations before. It's like done is better than perfect. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I say it because I struggle with it. Um, I struggle with, you know, the name and the name of my company took forever to, to be, you know, to decide it. And then when, once I did it, I'm like, why did I take so long on doing this? You know? And that's why I, I say it. Um, 
you know, I just, you know, I, I think that's what people will focus because, you know, you can always change it too, but, you know, you're going to save money if you just wait a little bit, decide on your niche, and then you do all your branding and stuff. Um, you can always adjust it, of course. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Great stuff. So I want to warn you to, to wait until you are done with picking your niche to start doing all your branding and your, your logo and your business card. You know, you don't have to do that day one. You don't have to spend money on day one doing these things until you have a clear vision of what you want to do in real estate. So wait until this step, until you did everything before this to start doing your brand and your logo and your cards. And I know a lot of you are going to be saying, but I am not creative. I don't know how to do this. There is a lot of websites uh, that can help you do this. Uh, you know, creating a logo. You can just go. This is what I did. OK, because I, even though I am a little bit on design, I also need inspiration. I went to Google and I Googled logos with a T, you know, because I knew I wanted my company to be Italian investment. So I looked at a bunch of logos with a T and I picked the ones that I liked and I put them in a folder. And then I said logos that are in a circle because I knew I wanted it to be a circle. So I saw these logos and I saved them and then logos with cursive uh, text. And so then I, I grabbed, you know, 10 different logos that I kind of like so that, that I could hire somebody to create my logo that is going to be similar to all these ones. So I don't want them to copy these logos, but I want them to, to know what I like about the logo. So I could point and say, look, I like this text. I like this font. I like the shape of this logo. I like the, the cursive of this logo. And then you can pick your colors and stuff. So you don't have to be a designer to be able to do this. And you can go onto websites like Fiverr or Upwork and hire somebody to do this once you know what you want. The other option, if your budget is a little bit higher and you are not design oriented at all, there is websites like 99designs where when you do a small interview and they ask you what you like, what you want the logo to, to feel like. And once you do this survey, you pay a plan, different prices, and they will um, compete and send you a, a bunch of people will compete for your business and they will send you logos for you to pick. And then you're going to have like a different level. So there's going to be round one where a lot of people are going to compete. Then you're going to pick, let's say, three of them that you liked. And then they are going to refine the logo based on your comments. And then they're going to send you a final one. Um, so that's another way to do all these logo and business cards and kind of marketing um, without being a design person. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you want to create your bio. You want to tell people um, what who you are and what you want to do so that when you meet somebody, you can share this information with them. And once you have your bio done, then you can create your quick elevator um, speech, right? So you're going to take your, your, your bio and you're going to put all your detailed information, you know, but then you're going to take that and summarize it and make it into an elevator pitch. And this elevator pitch is like so that you can tell quickly somebody what you do. For example, it could be I invest in multifamily in the market, in Florida market, and I am looking for uh, 20 to 50 units um, with these characteristics. Right. So that when you meet people, they know what you do. Or you can say, I help people you know, invest in multifamily through a multifamily. I will say that with your bio and even if you do like a one pager, the people that tell you they don't think that's a smart move probably don't have one. And so they don't understand the benefit of a one pager or having that bio and, and headshot and everything ready to go. Because. I think that it makes a huge difference. I also have a podcast. And when somebody sends me a one pager saying, hey, I'd love to be on your podcast. I have, I usually say yes anyway, just because we're looking for guests. But when I get a one pager, there's no question about it. I can see what they're into. I can get an idea of what the podcast is going to be like. And it's easier. I record for 60 minutes in a block. And we take that podcast and break it down into three podcasts so that people get three promos in a week. And it's just, I think it works really well that way. Well, if I don't have a one pager on you, I am guessing for the first probably 15, 20 minutes on where the podcast is going to go. And maybe it's not difficult for you, but it's hard for me. So that one pager is an amazing tool. And it really lets people know what you're doing, what you're up to and the things that you love. Exactly, exactly. And, uh, you know, like me, I, I like to make the joke of, um, you know, uh, necessity is the mother of invention, but it's also the mother of my skill set. And so when it came to like learn, learning about design, you know, I, I wasn't passionate about it from the beginning. I came from the tech side and then uh, there was enough of a demand. And I thought that the, you know, the costs involved, you know, back in, you know, like 20, 2011, 2012, you know, they were inhibitive. So uh, the, the good news for anybody who has no design chops at all, the good news is you can study this stuff. Right. You, you can just go ahead and, and learn, OK, well, well, what's the difference between a good logo and a bad logo? You know, like what are the ones that work? And, and the reason why you might want to be having this thought process go through your head is because if everybody thinks your stuff is ugly, 
you know, like, would you know, you know, like that's part of the question, right? It, it's like, you know, like you might have really bad taste. And so like, well, when should you say it's like, okay, you know, like, why am I in the driver's seat for something that I am so ill-equipped for? You know, Jason loves to say, uh, uh, go with your super, superpowers and delegate out. Uh, uh, and, and I think that's a great example, but just, just, just don't think that you're hopeless. That's what I want to say. But uh, we only have a few minutes left. Uh, we're going to do the uh, uh, doggy bag in another couple minutes with the takeaways. But this is the REI Rocks Review. We're here every Friday at 11 a.m. We are on Facebook. We are on YouTube. We are on LinkedIn. We're all over the Internet. And that's uh, pretty awesome. Let's continue. Family assets uh, or, or something like that. Uh, but, you know, that will be easier to create once you have your bio and, you know, and now, once you have all these things, now you can create your website. Now you know your niche, you know what you want to focus on, so that when you create your website, you are going to put all this information on your website. Um, but without you know, educating yourself, without picking your niche market, you're not going to be able to have an effective website. You know, you want to have some, um, you know, for example, on my website, I have a glossary of commercial real estate terms. Um, if I was doing residential, then you know, my, my giveaway should be residential uh, real estate terms instead of commercial, but because I'm focusing on commercial, that's what I'm helping people with and giving them uh, away when they come visit my website. So, you know, you got to be specific to your niche. So that's why you, you first look at that. Um, and then social media. Once you have your logo, your brand, your colors, now you, you, you have something, some guidelines to post on social media so that your brand is unified. Like you're going to see, um, you're going to be a little bit specific. fun we have a spinny video but uh i think it's a, a good time anyway to do some takeaways regardless because you know uh, oh good it restarted and everything that was fun but anyway uh, as far as the key takeaways and things like that one thing uh we'd be remiss not to mention is uh, is jason's underwriting he's now doing some coaching with this as well so make sure you reach out to him for that the triangles i've got for everybody's face and the qr code that you can scan with your phone is there on the screen if you want to find out if there's any more room in your underwriting so, uh, uh, Jason, did you have uh, anything more to add on uh, on underwriting, or do you want to go straight to the takeaways? No, I can add some stuff. Um, I think this website goes to my underwriting services where I can help you with your current underwriting. But I also do underwriting coaching right now. Um, we're, we're still developing that website so that we can lead people there. Um, so I have, like, Two different services coaching and then also helping you with your underwriting so just wanted to point throw that out there excellent excellent and then as far as takeaways from today i think that this is this really is a great uh starting point for everybody uh telling you like right from day one you day zero as a matter of fact you know nothing about any of this stuff other than when you want to buy a house, it's really, really expensive. And when you, maybe you know that if you want to rent a storefront, that's really, really expensive. But you can conclude that a commercial building is inhibitively expensive. But uh, how do you get to the point where just regular piece, people can get uh, a piece of the action? I, I think you've done a great job on that. Um, Annette, uh, maybe, maybe we'll let you start off since it was your presentation. You know, like, was there, were there some things you wanted to emphasize or, or bring up? Um, well, I think, and I mentioned it on the video, um, you know, when we think about like, how do we get that deal, that big deal, which, you know, to me, a big deal was a six unit when I started, right? And there's nothing wrong to start with small. I actually prefer to start with something small and make mistakes with a small one instead of like a big one and then make mistakes with the big one. Um, so I started with duplexes, uh, and then once I got, like when I doubled my portfolio, I had six units in duplexes, and then I like bought a six unit. And to me, that was doubling my portfolio. Uh, and then, you know, I bought bigger stuff uh, as I, you know, continue to do real estate. Uh, but the main thing is like not to overwhelm yourself. And like, if you do these steps, um, it's going to be just a little task that you can complete in one to two weeks if you're too busy, if you're doing it at night, when you come back from work. If you just tackle each of them, little by little you're gonna see the progress and you're gonna get excited and you're gonna continue but if you try to do everything at the same time and you like are doing this and you're doing that you know it's just gonna be overwhelming 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and I don't know if you're still doing those virtual meetups, uh, but uh, uh, like the the website, the best website for you guys uh, right now. How how should people reach out to? Uh, yes, yeah, so my website is uh, taliinvestments.com. Um, we are not doing the, the virtual uh, meetups that much because we are doing our monthly meetup. It's the third Wednesday of the month here in South Florida. Um, the other place that you can find us is on uh, South Florida Multifamily and More Facebook group. Uh, that's where you can sign up for our meetups and get a reminder for our, our meetups if you're local to us. Um, but I like I, I love to do the virtual, but I love more to meet in person. So I, I do my monthly meetup and then I go to other people's meetups. Uh, that's that's my my main thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to to piggyback off of what you're saying. You do my little steps in the evenings and, and you make progress. And then that goes back to what we were saying at the very beginning today where you need to celebrate your wins, even if they are small, celebrate them so that you know you're making progress and you don't get discouraged and then you don't give up. You keep, If you keep forward progression and you acknowledge that, then you will move, continue moving in the right direction. Yes, and I think when people start, they think that by like owning one duplex is not a big deal or like, you know, submitting an offer is not a big deal. But most people don't own anything. So just having one investment property is a huge deal. You know, when you buy the second one, it's like, oh, no, but like everybody has 10 or 20 or 30 or 100. But I, I only have one. It doesn't matter. You should not be comparing yourself with other people. And you should like, to me, um, where I am right now in my life, you know, I have small kids and, you know, I quit my job. I'm spending more time with them. Um, I don't want to have like a hundred thousand units. I just want to have enough where I can spend time with them and, you know, enjoy it. Right. So I, I am growing, but I'm growing at a slower pace because it just makes more sense. And, you know, like I said on the presentation, like you can, you can pivot, you know, depending on the market or depending on your um goals right so when i started i wanted financial freedom i didn't want to have to work so i kind of reached that so okay now what's important to me do i want to be working 24 7 to continue to acquire a, a thousand units or do i want to have more time for my family and once they are a little bit older my kids then i can you know put more effort on, a, on, on more acquisition so you know you it's open to whatever you want it doesn't have to be whatever other people are doing so just Focus on your goals and celebrate the little stuff because it's going to get you farther. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. The one thing that I'd add to from a strategic uh, standpoint is find out why people are going for different sizes. You know, like what what exactly is going through their head when they say this is the niche that I'm going to focus on? Like, did it just fall in their lap? Because probably not. There was probably some sort of reason for why they did it. And that's why in uh, on my YouTube channel, the Chance Encounter interviews, I always ask people for their buy box. So I say from a geography, size and class perspective, what you're looking for, you know, so how many units, which states, which counties, you know, what sort of uh, uh, area and condition of buildings are you looking for? And just from that right there, I already have a pretty good idea of their level of sophistication, quite frankly. But, yes, uh, having yeah. your buy box ready to go is like having your bio ready to go. Your bio describes you and then your buy box describes what you want to buy. And so if you are talking to a broker and they are like, so what do you want? I'm like, hey, everything, just a good deal. I mean, a good deal can be something different for me than it's for you. Right. So for me, my buy box right now, I am looking for Florida uh, block construction, not wood, because we have hurricanes here. So I only buy, uh, you know, concrete construction. Um, I go from South Florida to Volusia County. And, you know, so th that, those are my requirements, C class or up. Uh, so if you have that ready, when you're talking to a broker, they are going to know that you are serious about it, that you already have a plan and you're not like, yeah, just send me a deal. <laughs> That's so great. That's so great. Yeah. Yeah. If they don't care, then either, you know, they're sniffing you out as a sponsor, you know, saying like, okay, are you a decent operator? That's more what I'm concerned about than, mm -hmm. you know, the specifics or they just aren't going to sniff anybody out. And that's danger, danger. 
Yeah. <laughs> that, that, and the other thing is, like, you know, talking about the bio, now that I think about it, right? Like, when you talk, call a broker and you're like, hey, you know, I'm looking for multifamily. I want to buy stuff. And, you know, I think it's a good investment. They're going to be like, who is this person? Compared to, like, hey, this is Annette. I'm a real estate investor. I uh, focus on multifamily in Volusia County and, you know, Miami-Dade or Broward County. And my buy box is this. I own these many properties. I self-manage. And you have that bio, you know, where you're telling them, like, all that you are. They're like, okay, like, this person is serious. And they are going to give you information. Uh, if you are, like, just casual about it and you don't know what you want, they are not going to call you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, to finish off the other thing, total kudos for steel reinforced concrete. I remember back in Taiwan, I always used to tell people, you know, it's like, well, like you should know about like, if you're going to get the huffing and the puffing and blow your house down, there was this story about these pigs. There were three of them, you know, and the one <laughs> who built his house out of steel reinforced concrete was totally fine. <laughs> So there, you go. good stuff. So uh, as far as doggy bags, any other comments? We're uh, we're we're all done for time. Yeah, Angel, go for it. I would just like to say that, um, you know, it's what it, when it put together in this is really from if you've never done anything and all the steps that need to take place to if you have done something, maybe you pick up at step two or step three. So it is still amazing. And I would absolutely say get that VIP subscription if for no other reason than to take a look at what Annette put together because it's um it's amazing. And when I look at it now, you know, it was a few years or it was a couple of years ago and I look at it now and I'm like, wow, that's kind of the same trajectory and pathway we took too was getting started, getting educated, finding a coach, getting into some masterminds. And I mean, we we tripled our net worth um in two to three years. So it's getting educated, getting a coach, getting a mentor, getting in those masterminds, you may be crying because it's money up front, but everybody else in those programs put their money up front too. So you're dealing with people that are of like mind and are just as serious as you are. Committed. You know, they are committed to getting it done. What are those four terms, Dan? You remember those? Uh, it, so it was committed, coachable, uh, yeah, it, right. It, it's uh, yeah, committed, coachable, uh, resourceful, and uh, I did. I thought there wasn't going to be a test today. Oh no! <laughs> you know them? Was it dedicated? Yeah, I think it was. It, it, no, well, committed and dedicated are kind of the same thing. There's four terms out there somewhere that talk about it. You can look them yeah. up. Right, right, exactly. So it, 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 that that's the spoiler. Uh, that's the secret. We're, we're going to put a prize or something if you find out the answer inside our content. That's uh, we'll, we'll figure that out to be announced. But uh, this has been great stuff. We're always here on the REI Rocks Review on Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern. We hope to see you again next week. This has been totally awesome getting to know Annette, and uh, it's been mostly painless, I, I, I hope. But uh, thanks a lot for joining us, uh, Annette. This has been awesome. Thank you for inviting me. Happy to be here. Uh -huh. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching.